I love Canada too. Here we go. Ready to rock and roll. in the world. Yeah, baby. Uh -huh. All right, guys, y'all grab a seat. Man, got a sharp crowd here today. We got to talk about winning That's right. and everything. And uh, I want to talk about how to be fanatical. What does that look like? Um, I, I, keys, the hotels. Um, so, so I, I'm fired up. What is it? Was December third, fourth, December four. Right. So I'm fired up about this, this um, next three weeks because people are gonna go click, 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 winning uh, this, this Alaskan cruise thing. That's you right. know what I'm saying? People are gonna start winning, and it's it's the last um, the last few days of that. And then the other thing is people that already run want it just making extra money and um, getting the momentum to go for January 1 contest. So we are, um, we're, we're planning right now to go to Thailand. Yeah. I don't know. Have y'all have ever been to Thailand? Um, so... Um, that's going to be a crazy trip. So that'll start January 1. And what I would like to do is get all of you, every single one of you, including you, Debbie, to win this all-expense-paid trip to, to Thailand. Would you like to do that? And so I'm, I'm going to talk about how to do that. Um, but but you, got, you kind of go past that getting to be fanatical. Fanatical's way more than just winning a trip to, to Thailand. It's, it's a crazy talk. Um, and I, I want to, I got so many things to talk to you about. Uh, um, Jeff Bright hit me. He, he said, what are you going to talk about? And um, I said, uh, how to be fanatical, what it looks like, how to find the fanatics, and how to coach them, how to teach them, how to move them along. And he said, I got to tell you about this fight. Um, this, guy named, this guy from Mexico that wanted to be the world heavyweight champion, he won this fight. And I was like, I ain't heard nothing about it. And he was like, he started telling me about it, so I did what the kids do. I Googled it, right? <laughs> you know, so I put it on a video. So um, to get my mind right, I'm going to ask Billy to pull up this video. Hope we don't get in no trouble for running this because it's, it's, we're playing what's already on YouTube. I think we're good legal-wise. But, but you want to play that? It's pretty cool. If you like, is anybody, like, offended when grown men fight? Well, you get ready to get offended <laughs> because you do like, you like it. You're going to raise your hand because you like it. But I'm saying if anybody gets offended by grown men fighting, punching each other fights, just put your hand over your eyes. So what had happened, according to Jeff, they, um, this fighter, the 6'6 six, six guy, had this fight with some guy that's supposed to be a contender, right? Well, the contender got drug tested, and they said he's out. And they said, well, find somebody else, some fool that'll be crazy enough to get him fighting. And this jerker right here said, I'll do it. <laughs> 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 he beat the, so they said, yeah, he's, he's, they called him the new, he's the Mexican Rocky. That's what they call him. How many of y'all saw this fight? 
You saw the fight? You saw it, Nick? Um, so, like, everybody out there in the audience, raise your hand if you ever seen I didn't know nothing about it. <laughs> Hand me up if you not only saw it, didn't know nothing about it. And didn't care nothing about it. Kevin, you got to raise your hand at some things. <laughs> you can't, can't not raise it. Um, so, so this guy now, he's somebody, right? And um, y'all know my friend Dante Wilder, right? Me and him tight, right? So Dante Wilder is world heavyweight. He's the heavyweight champion of the world, but it's some other group. So there's different groups. So this guy is now world heavyweight for all them groups. So he keeps winning. And then, so now Dante's got to fight this Durant again. Huh? Fury. Yeah. So he's got to fight Fury again. And if he beats Fury again, Dante, then they're going to fight. Those, these guys are fighting again. So, um, yeah. So whoever, they're they going to fight again. The 6'6 six, six and the 6'2 guy. Gonna fight again. I'm, I'm guessing the six six guy's American. Yeah. So they gonna fight again, and if he and then if the Mexican guy Andy, his name's Andy too. I like that about him. <laughs> so if Andy wins again, then he gonna fight Dante. Now I'm gonna tell you what, Bo. How many want to go see it now? How many like real would really, really go with me? How many of y'all got the money to go with me? And you can, how many afford? How many you can afford? You can afford to go. I mean, y'all, you can afford, you, you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I'm, 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 I'm one IUL away. <laughs> you should say I'm uno IUL. <laughs> it's crazy how it changes everything. You're like, who wants to go now? I done told you to, you know, Dante, see, um, Godfrey used to be the coach at NC State. He asked me, he said, you mind flying down, pick up Dante Wilder, the heavyweight champ of the world, flying back up here and talk to the players? I said, ah, I do it, yeah. So I flew down there and, you know, met him, got to know him, talked to him and everything. So I feel like I'm his buddy, you know. So he just keeps winning and winning and winning. It's just, well, Dante's crazy. He just, he just got upside the head and broke his hand and knew he broke it. So he, I, I said, so what'd you do? He said, I just beat the hell out of him with my left hand. <laughs> He said, uh, he said, I didn't let him know. He, I just started beating on him like I was, I was setting it up for a right hand. He was like, I can't hit him with that hand because the thing was killing me. You know? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> it broke his hand and then just whooped him with the other hand, beat him, just beat him till he give up. <laughs> he couldn't knock him out, but he could make him give up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 and now, say again. Anybody? It's a bad boy. Both of them. Dante. But, but this, this, this joker, he cray-cray. <laughs> I just, from now on, when something gets me upset, I'm going to be like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's your name? DJ. V, VJ. V. Everybody got good VJ. Sorry, it's easy to remember. <laughs> kind of. Um, who who hired you, VJ? Jamal, Jamal, who? Just it won't sound like it's coming through, but it, it helps that everybody else here. And who? Anybody? Any idea who hired Jamal? Glenn Lamb. Oh yeah. Okay. Jamal's trying to win. Um, he's trying to win this Alaskan cruise. Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear that. Ain't that true? I think, I think I saw that Luntz was trying to get him some leads to give him a shot to win that. Um, so, what kind of work you do, VJ? I was employed with Liberty National. Liberty, that's insurance life, life insurance, right? yeah. I was Did you work like a corporate person or were you as an agent? No, nah, agent. agent. I was an agent. What did you and do before I, that? Um, before that, I used to work for Winston State University as a building environment technician. Winston Salem. Winston State University. Right over there, Winston Salem. Yeah. West of here. Mm -hmm. All right, I got you. Where'd you go to high school? Mount Tabor, high school. Mount Tabor. Mount Tabor. Mount Tabor. Um, that Joker didn't look like he was gonna win, did he? Nah, he didn't. When you watched the fight, was you expecting the fight, or was you just expecting to get somebody to get the hell beat out of him? <laughs> I honestly thought Anthony Joshua would win because as much as they you hype thought, him up. You, you thought Andy? No. No, Anthony. you thought Anthony. I mean, yeah. 
Yeah. I thought he was going to win because well, the really, first time he knocked Andy out, the, yeah. the, the announcer said, hey, watch this how he wraps this up. Sure. So what was you going to say? Um, I know at first before Anthony lost, they wanted to see him and Dante fight because they both at the time was undefeated. Come here. So, so Dante, I mean, Anthony ain't never fought, lost before. Until he was like twenty two and oh. Yeah, until and Andy. Dante Dante ain't lost neither, has nah, he? No, he ain't lost neither. So Dante's undefeated mm-hmm. and this guy was undefeated. But and then I told today. the truth about that that um the other guy was supposed to fight him had a drug thing, they kicked him out. Yeah. So they just found this fool say <laughs> And he and he had confidence that he'll win too. That's the oh, yeah, crazy he, thing. He, he was said, the only I, one that I, had confidence I, I, in himself. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had confidence in himself. <laughs> He said confidence in himself. He just said, I, I, I do it. Yeah, he said, yeah, do it. <laughs> <laughs> that make you nervous. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> he got self-confidence. So, um, I, I, I want to, you see, I wonder how many people thought he was, what was the odds? How much you could have won on that guy? Man, yeah, it was low. I mean, some people did bet on him. They showed the odds after the fight. Some, it was Mainly, uh, ham- it was like a low percentage. I bet you it's a lot of people lost money. Yeah, probably people he knew. Fifteen ones is odds. Nobody had him winning at all. So if you bet ten thousand, you got one hundred fifty thousand. Is that the way it works? And my, probably some of his friends, probably from Mexico, they're like, "That's hey, crazy. He's gonna go out and kill him." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um. So so here's there's a lot of stuff. That, that I want to tell you about is, and, and the biggest thing is this, if you'll hang around, mm-hmm. i help you be a multimillionaire. It's a, uh, you just can't miss. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. But I can't go find you. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. You got to come to the fight. You with me? Mm-hmm. And I was going to tell you that too, Kevin. Um, Kevin, come here and get a mic. I want you to get some air time. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin, tell me your last name. Rivera? Rivera. Rivera. Is that like the guy that got fired today, Rivera? That, you know anything about that? Uh, Ron know. Rivera. That's the Ron Rivera. Said coach. <laughs> Bo, you know everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I always play football, so I'm a sports, Where'd you play I'm a sports fan all the way around. I play played from Mount Tabor. What position? Running back. I could have mm. played in college, but I stopped. Yeah, and I could have too. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. No, nah, you're good. <laughs> I didn't mean to be a smart aleck. No, nah, you good. <laughs> um, so um, you just hang around, you'll get rich. Now, it will help if you would work. Does that make sense? I, I don't know. Like, Debbie, I like the way that you're sticking with us. I'm just telling you. You had, how's that boy doing in Caswell County? What's his name? Angel or Virgil or something like that? Sterling, right. I knew it was a word like that. Sterling. Is he, is he hanging in there? Is he, getting class? is he going through class? He is? Okay. Well, so you keep hanging in there. You're going to find somebody like him or like Sterling or somebody, but you just got to keep playing the game. Now, the, it's different in Vegas. You keep playing, you're going to lose everything. You keep playing here, you're going to get rich. Does that make sense? Yes, but you got to play. And the better you play, the better you're going to, the quicker you're going to win. And I hate to say this, but I swear I've been doing this for 20 seven years and it seems like there is a little bit of luck involved does that make sense yes, now a lot of people say like well luck means lucifer i said no luck means you found somebody good that can sail does that make sense yes, luck, luck lucifer something like that they said it was blessed well pray god bless you whatever but i'm saying just luck up and find somebody good y'all know what i mean how many think your upline is just plain lucky? That's how he got you. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> You're lucky he found me. <laughs> but um, so 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 like I'm gonna talk to you about this fight and start it gets it gets you go. How many just your energy just go up talking about well since I've been here talking about this fight? Does anybody yeah. anybody's energy go down? Like I changed my mind. I don't want to do this. You scratching your head or you were? Okay, yeah. All right. So um, I can't help you. And, and people do this. They isolate themselves. They get depressed and they go into a spiral and they go away. And I'm just telling you, I'm the same way. I'm just smart enough to come back around. Does that make sense? Like I just, I just know to come back. 
And, and I, cause somebody told me, just like I'm telling you, so I want to be the one what told you that you need to stay around and keep coming back. Tracking with me, Blake? Okay, so here's what I want to tell you about this fight. This guy is now heavyweight champion of the world, mm -hmm. and only two of y'all in here nude it. <laughs> that makes sense? Yes, sir. That makes so sense. I am now a multimillionaire, but the only people in the world, I saw some stats today, is 327,600,000 3, rear ends in America today. Butts. Y'all know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Each person's got one butt. Mm. Unless. <laughs> I, I guess that's the way it works. <laughs> I mean, it counts as one. It might be bigger than some. <laughs> you with me? 327. So, so 327 million don't, people don't know I'm rich. And the people in Canada didn't know. Like a guy's getting a cup of coffee from him today. He didn't know. Because I don't have no idea. So when you get rich, it's not going to upset the apple cart. It nothing, they're not going to go like, oh, not you. <laughs> this jerker knocked that jerker out. They'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> nobody cares. Does that make sense? Like, that was one of my thoughts. It's like, how am I ever going to get rich? What they going to, I mean, like, like, who, who was it? Was it Nick? Who was it last week said? I thought it was like, you rich, you're rich. Nope. Nope. You're going to be rich. Nope. Who said that? Mark Hutchinson. He said he thought, Mark Hutchinson said, Mark's number one right now in the country for points when it comes to the cruise points, okay? And he ain't getting no bonus points. All his is premium, either annuities, IULs, or life. He said, and then um, he got married, had a baby, and Shannon, I think, is his wife. And Shannon likes nice stuff, and he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to work more and sell more and have more money. And he did. And ain't nobody had no heart attack. Matter of fact, I ain't even mentioned it until this lately. I was just looking at it. I was like, so somebody ought to mention him. He's number one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just started talking about it. But until then, y'all didn't notice because you're looking at your own name on that board. So I'm telling you that we can have, we can break five new millionaires in 2020 and it won't upset the apple cart. It won't be like two, like, like in this room, you think, man, we could get about another 50 people in here or something like that. That's true. But then eventually, we'd be like, no more. Namas. No, no more people can get in the room. But the millionaire room is wide open. It's like there's plenty of room. There's nothing holding you down. There was nothing stopping Mark Hutchinson but Mark Hutchinson. There was no invisible, um, you can make a lot of money person out there. There was nobody go out there that said, you, you, not you, you, yes, you, yes, nope. Nope, 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 nope. You know, is there, there was nobody like that. Once he figured that out, or I mean, I don't think he figured that out. He just started doing it, and then he realized there was nothing like that existed. Does that make sense? So nobody stopped this guy, and you said he had the confidence. Yeah, he had the confidence. Now, do you know that did, did the reporters say they asked him and they tried to find somebody, or did he raise his hand? Do you know the story behind that? Um, I, I can't remember, but I know he did say he had confidence that he could beat him. Yeah. He, well, he said he took the fight because he got confidence. He said nobody else believed in him, but he believed in himself and that he can do the impossible. And he proved Do you that know what his world. record was prior to? I think he had not too many losses. It was about, I want to say, five or four losses. He, he wasn't too bad. Off, he was, he was a pretty good losses. fighter. Yeah, he was pretty good. But he fighter. wasn't undefeated. He wasn't a known fighter, though. That, that's what it really was. He wasn't a known all around the world fight, yeah. fighter to. But, dude, dude, everybody. dude, watch this. How many of y'all know, how many ever have seen a Dante, Dante fight, Dante Wilder fight? You with me? Look, in yeah. other words, hardly anybody knows Dante Wilder. Now, and by the way, I talk about him a lot, mm -hmm. so the higher percentages are on here. Y'all tracking with me? Like, what I'm telling you is, it's not, it's not limited, especially in America. That's, I mean, if you're in other countries, you realize you can't get nothing unless you corrupt or you're in the government or... Of course, I, I said that twice, didn't I? Corrupt or in the government. Um, but you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's just the, you just don't have a way to get up. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, they ain't paying no attention. Look, they've got tattoos on them and everything. They don't care. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? It's like it's just like they don't, they don't care. It's, it's free to you. 
Okay. Um, Y'all grab a seat. I'm not going to okay. get you. It's VJ, right? Yes, sir. V VJ, tell them your first last name and who hired you again. My name is Benoit Jefferson, and Jamal Neal hired me. All right, same, same. Uh, my name is Kevin Rivera, and uh, you hired me. <laughs> I, I kind of did. You're um that the the lady, the young lady. What's her name that we me and you both know that how she connected us? Uh, Maria. Maria. So Maria come in to interview with Lucera, right? You did you know her? Is she related to you? You know, how'd you know her? Just a friend of family. Friends. 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 She's a friend. She's an acquaintance. Yeah. And so she's sitting down there talking to Maria, and I said, "Hey, Maria, how you doing? My name's Andrew. Oh, nice to meet you." And I say, hey, let me show you something, Maria. And I started showing her my, my, um, my coin, my success coin. I guess two sides to success. What's your name, ma'am? Brenda. There's, have you ever seen my success coin? Well, there's two sides to success coin. One side says, what do I want? See how it says it right across the top there? What do I want? So I'm doing this, Maria. I said, Maria, most people can't figure out what they want. And then the other side of success is how do I get what I want? Does that make sense? So, like, success is different things to different people. Like, if getting a Ferrari is not tied to success, you say, I just want to be happy. Well, then that's what you want. Okay, what's a, what's, what does happiness look like? Meaning simple, clear goals. Say, well, I want to be healthy. Okay, great. You know, need to be healthy. How much does that weigh? How much does healthy weigh? You know, and, and um, stuff like that. You know what I mean? How many massages do you need to be healthy? You know what I mean? Or... <laughs> Do you need a pedicure to be, you know what I'm saying? You start litting down, I want a pedicure once a month. That way keep my toenails looking right, you know? Mm -hmm. And then how do I get it? Well, you better find somebody to the toenail place. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. How do I get, so simple, clear goals. So I'm, tell, I'm selling Marie on this hot. I mean, I'm just lighting her up, right? She, I like, so what I like to do is, is talk to um, Austin. I, I like to talk to young people and say, all right, this is how it works, right? And just see them light up, you know? Because they never heard this is how it works. They think it's more complicated than that. It ain't more complicated than that. It's how simple it is. I remember, um, are, you, are you Ethan? Ethan, when I first heard this, the guy was telling me that. I said, no. Oh. You know what I mean? I was like, I say it's more complicated than that. You know what I'm saying? And he said, no, 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 more complicated. And he's crazy rich. And so I like telling people that. So they go like, really? Is that all it is? I go, yeah, that's what it is. So. She said, you know, she looked at me and she said, I thought she was getting fired up. She was kind of. She said, would you call my um, ex? I was like, your ex what? My boyfriend. I said, okay, ex-boyfriend. I didn't know what she meant. You know what I'm saying? She said, no, will you call him and talk to him about this? I said, why? She said, he likes that sort of thing. I said, well, hold on here. He tell me why he's your ex-boyfriend. I ain't going to get into all that, but that's what she said. And so, because I didn't know, I was like, I ain't going to put it on what happened. Depending on what happened, what I'm going to call him. And she says, no, 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 no. And she told me, she says, she says, we're friends. We're friends. I like him and everything. I'm just not dating right now. And she said, but he would like, he likes this sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I can't remember. Did we get you on the phone right away? Right, no. She, she called me. Yeah. She called you, and they said, um, I said, well, tell him to come meet me. And they said, well, he's at work. I said, well, tell him to get off work. <laughs> and they said, um, well, how long, much longer? I said, about an hour, an hour and 10 minutes. They said, well, he's about an hour away. I said, well, tell him to get off work and come see me. And, and so he showed up over there at the jet. We was getting ready to take off. When I was getting ready to get on the jet, he come pulling up. We got to chat a minute. I said, hey, here's what you do. You, you, you understand what I'm telling you? Mm -hmm. and, and in other words, it's just simple, simple. You got a friend, I talked to your friend. She's in class. She's, all she's got to do is take state tests. Her mama's getting surgery on her hand today. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. you, I'm telling y'all, this is how this dadgum thing works. Now, I got this joker. How old are you? 23. 23. Mike's going to be a little bit higher. 23 years old. It's weird the way it picks up. Um, so 23 years old. So I got the next seven years to get him multimillionaire before he's in his 30s. So if you'll cooperate with, cooperate with me, it's a 100% chance it'll work. It's just a matter of just luck and time. It's not, it, it, it is, but it's not. You with me? Like, just don't mess stuff up. It's part of being lucky, too. You know what I mean? Like, you jack it up, you know, um, and you say, how can you jack this up? Trust me, I got some people to show you how to mess it up. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, now... This, this guy right here, 
main thing he did is what? Get back up. Because he had plenty of chances to quit, had blood coming out of his nose, and was wore out, but he's kept getting back up. You with me? Now, some people say, some people say to you, Deb, you're just a glutton for punishment because you keep getting knocked down, but you keep getting back up. And I'm telling you, you keep getting back up, the other one's going to go down. Now, in sports, they have a time limit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In life, they have an age limit. Okay? And what I mean is you're going to die. Meaning, one of my goals, and if, if, you, if I had to do over, here's what I would say. I wish I would have got rich younger, but there's nothing I can do about that. But I'm 55, I can, get, I can do better when I'm 55 instead of waiting until I'm 60. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, like, I'd like to see you get rich and get your Ferrari when you're able to bend over and get in and out of it. I have to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, and Lamborghini's worse. Uh, now, if you take the top off, it's fine because yeah. his head is together. You know, that's, you know <laughs> does that make sense? Yes. So a lot of times when I do stuff now, it's because I want to get the money, Austin, before I get old. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I'm still mobile. I can still get around. I can't. I, I hate people that when they can't start walking and stuff. You know, because you ought to see where we stayed um, yesterday. I bet we didn't give them any pictures, but they're pro they, some of them posted on band. Um, we went up to the top of this stadium. What was the name of that stadium we were in? It's in Toronto. Um, I can't think of the name of it. We went up six flights, and I was like, oh, God, we ain't going to be able to see the game. Well, then we went out on this, this ledge, Terry, and then went down into boxes that were hanging down over this, like if you're scared of heights, you probably wouldn't. You probably said, "I'll go back. I'll go back to the hotel and watch it on TV." <laughs> but you were hanging over the um, game court. You could see them playing this day, and the pictures are awesome. And y'all see the pictures on posted on band. Um, but I was thinking, somebody could couldn't walk where I had to walk. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody, it's not accessible to everybody. But I'm gonna tell you what, Bo. It was they had bar set up in there. They had it was about 30 of us. They had popcorn out at every spot already, mm. cookies out, um, um, cupcakes out, and they had a big pizza machine. And you just open the machine. You know how to where it's spinning around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just take whatever you want out there. It had hot dogs, chicken wings, all just insane amounts of food just spread out. And so we just went in there and started party for the whole game. With me, huh? Must be nice. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Well, I like that I'm not too old that I can't get there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like I just, I, I think like that. And some people um, have said things to me like, hey, you shouldn't talk about death. And I'd be like, I read one time that people know they're going to die, going to get stuff done more than a person thinks he ain't going to die because he thinks, he thinks he's got plenty of time. And you think you ain't going to get old, then it's going to take forever to, to get the job done. But if you get a concept, Look, look, look at the back of my hand, the old man hand. Look at that. Put your hand out here. See the difference in that? Y'all can't see. It's just like I think, I think I'm his age until I start telling him something. I look at my hand. I go, Let me tell you a thing. I ain't going to ask your hand if you think like it, but I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I think I'm the same age until I put my hand out and I go like, oh, that thing getting ready to die. You, you know, does that make <laughs> <laughs> you better sit back down. <laughs> B, BJ, sit back down. Kevin, I'm going to talk to you some more, but I, I'm glad to see you here, man. Hey, congr did you just pass your test? Congratulations. Y'all give him a hand. Did you, did you take take two or three times or do it the first time? First time. First time. Daggum. Have you took your test yet, BJ? You was already like because you was with Liberty Nash or National Storm. All right. Okay, so a million things I want to tell you. Um, Hey, I got this. This is kind of crazy. This might mess y'all up. Somebody might. I, I, I said, I was thinking I'm probably going to make somebody mad today. I don't mean to make people mad. I just, it's natural. You know? <laughs> See if I can find it. There's a green book that I put, um, that I wrote. It's the Millionaire Maker Manual. And I was thinking the other day, I was on a jet, and I was thinking, I should go down there and pull out the Bible verses that's in the Millionaire Maker Manual. Because I don't want somebody to start talking about something, and I'll be like, where'd you see that? And they would be like, in your book. I'll be like, oh, I forgot I put that in there. 
because you can't remember everything you put in a book. But, but I was thinking I ought to remember the Bible verses that I, I put in the book. So inside the green book, there's these Bible verses. One is um, Galatians 6, 9. It says, and let not, and, and let, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Does that make sense? So what happens is, like Andy Riddle, um, if I pull up, I pull up the recruiting, I'll let you look for that recruiting thing. Pull up the, um, flip through that until you find the recruiting, um, recruiting leaderboard. I think he's hired 155 people direct to him. Oh, hey, oh, that's not it, but it's close. Um, do me, it's, it's, you, I didn't ask you to have it. Um, I didn't ask you to have it, so it shouldn't be in there, Billy. I'm asking for something that I, I did not ask you to have. I, I would like to write. I would like to draw a picture, though, make sure everybody understands this. Okay, so there's so many things I'm trying to tell you, Kevin, but I can't, and I'm trying to think what's the most important that you get. Now, the biggest thing, also, see, I hired him. Does that make sense? Well, I hired, really, I hired Lucera, who hired him, but it's just like I hired him, and it's Maria. I'm checking on Maria you know, like I'm checking on him. But I, I, wanna, I want you to understand how I talk to him and how I deal with him. Does that make sense? This is how I deal with everybody the same way. Did you find Riddle? It's on there. It, well, if you flip, you flip the page behind it, it's a year to date. All right, look at here. Let me show you what, what this means. You got it? How many is he hired? 258, okay? So here's the way it works. When we say hired somebody, Here's what it looks like. This is you, VJ, or this is you, Kevin, and you hire this person, then hire another person, you hire another person, you hire another person. Now, in your case, you're hired by Maria. So the way it looks is Maria hired you. You're the only one. If she hires another one, we're going to draw it like that. Now, if you hire somebody, that's the not the same thing as her hiring somebody. This is you hiring. So Riddle has hired this year 200 and 258 people direct to him. Now, if you just hired this person and he gets massive, and you hired this person and he gets massive, and this person he gets massive, and then some guy just writes one policy a month, that would make you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, I'd say you're at least being a quarter of a million dollar income. So if you got lucky and the first person you hired is just awesome, like if I were you, I'd be like, like Maria. <laughs> Maria hired me. She did lucky and you'd be like this Neil guy. What's his name? Well, he did lucky. He hired you, right? Well, if you do good, it's true that Jamal Neil did hire somebody good. So then if you hire somebody, that right there, so you think, well, Andy Riddle must be a gazillionaire if he hired 258 people last year. The problem is a lot of these people he hired and they quit. They did nothing. Does that make sense? So here's what a lot of people would do is they would say, this is another, man, it's the day of the Andes. You know, Andy won a boxing match. I'm Andy and Andy Riddle's doing recruiting. Just change your name to Andy, right? <laughs> okay, so Andy could say, obviously, obviously everybody I'm hiring this system don't work. This is a stupid company, blah, 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 blah. But Riddle, well, here's what Riddle's saying. I learned a lot this year that don't work. I'm narrowing it down to what does work. Now, this one guy named Jerry Burbage that he hired, and his girlfriend is Cassie, I think. And this joker's smoking. This is his first full year, got started in January, and he's making, uh, I think he's getting close to $100,000 income, and he's already won the cruise. He's, I think he's 100 and, um, 184,000 points. This guy right here is 184,000 points. So some people will say, but look how many people we hired to have to get that one. Well, if he'd hired him first and not hired nobody else, it would have only took one. You follow what I'm saying? Okay. Now, J this guy, what did I say his name was? Jerry Burbage. He hung out with us, won a trip, and, and hung out with us up there and just had a good time. You with me? And he got to go in his suite and 
you know, he's, 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 he's a fun guy, you know, just, just, he was a construction guy. I said, now construction like a supervisor, construction like a superintendent. He said, no, I'm not the guy with a hammer. And the guy that carried the shingles around on his shoulder and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, okay. He said, uh, I said, what happened? He said, I hurt my back. And the doctor told me I'll do something with my brain instead of my back. I said, oh, so you got an insurance license? He said, yeah, I thought I'd try this. I said, you like it? He said, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Can you believe how much money I'm making? But so, you with me on this? Andy Riddle didn't get weary in well doing. Does that make sense? So this year, he's going to come back. And maybe he's going to recruit, maybe he don't recruit but 80 this time. Maybe he recruits 100. Maybe he recruits 300. Maybe he recruits four. It's up to Andy what Andy do. It's going to be up to you. You with me? And I got, I got friends in here that I, I want them to do more because I want them to have more. Like, if I say, I'm, even, I mean, tonight, I, I think um, I'm going to a basketball game at 9.15 tonight. And, and I want to invite every one of you, but I'm going like, I don't know if I'll mess up your income and I don't know what you got, you know. You know what I'm saying? I, I, can't, I can't just, you can't invite anybody because I'll go with you. And then I found out that they really needed to work. Does that make sense? Or if I say, hey, we're going to Vegas. Um, anybody wants to go, book your ticket. Here's where we're staying. We're going to watch this fight when Dante fights um, um, that boy. Um, no, uh, Andy. Ruiz, right? Um, so, because I don't know who's got, and now if I pay for it, I know you go, but I don't want to take you out of your business for three days or four days. Uh, but, but it'd be cool if you could afford it. Does that make sense? But you see, now, the problem is you didn't even know I was going to invite you to do this, but now you know. Does that make sense? So now you need to pile up some money in the bank so you're ready to go with me. Is it, you tracking with me on this? So what you got to do is figure out a reason. They some say it a why. Notice there's no why on here. You with me? A lot of people are like, well, you got to have a why. I mean, you ain't got no why. You can just do it. Things make sense. And everybody got the same why anyway. I don't know why people complicate that process. It's the what that's usually different, and it's the how that's usually different. Learn how to do it. Okay, so let me, let me get back to these things that's in the green book. So here's another one. Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things who Christ who strengthens me. Now that's saying, I can do all things who Christ who strengthens me. Saying it meaning there's a spirit out there that makes me a superhuman, super powerful, right? Super successful, right? So in other words, I'm not capable because I'm a stupid old redneck from Union Ridge with insecurities, and I'm real shy, and I'm real backwards, and I'm real dumb and oblivious to things. And some of my friends will tell you all that's true, you know. But through Christ, I can do anything who strengthens me. Now, here's what the um, pessimists say. And they say, like, that is just a psychological um, uh, crutch that helps you get through your day and helps you to, to do your job. And I go, like, okay. <laughs> What's your strategy? What's your strategy for making millions of dollars? Well, I, you know, I don't have one. I go, there you go. You know, you're, maybe you ought to adopt mine. <laughs> well, I don't believe in Jesus. Well, <laughs> I'm kind of a living example, you know, like as in as it must have been Jesus because it wasn't me. <laughs> Does that make sense? You say, you don't have a self-image to think it's you? No. Do you? Well, yeah, I have self-image. Well, then do it then. Quit talking about it. Yakety yak. I hear your gums are flapping. I just don't see no money. Does that make sense? Well, get Jesus, maybe. Does that make sense? Who said, I don't want to get Jesus. Well, then get some milk. I don't know what to tell you. Does a body good. That's what I was thinking. Does that make sense? I don't, I don't think of something. Don't just stand there and bleed. You don't just stand there and be broke the rest of your life. Get milk, get Jesus, get busy. That makes sense. But I, this is in the green book as a suggestion. Do what? Get to the get the milk, get to Jesus, get busy. Toop, 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 toop. Oh, Drake was there last night. Yeah. I didn't know who he was, but he was there. And then I Googled him. <laughs> He's the last 10 years, more, more rap songs of his played than any other rap singer. I said they give him a jet. 
He was just walking around like a human down there. <laughs> you know? What's that one? What's that one that got Jesus and then got they got mad? Got Jesus got got Jesus got God got Trump. <laughs> Pissed people off. <laughs> got more famous. <laughs> he didn't catch up with Drake. What's his name again? Kanye. Kanye. No, I'm pissing him off. Huh? He's going around singing what? Church song. Yeah, they had him on um Joel Osteen had him on there. Mm-hmm. I think of what Melanie Ray would say, but I ain't going to say it because I ain't Melanie Ray. <laughs> She's funny. Y'all know that Chadwick's wife? She'd be, she'd be describing the whole thing. She'd be laughing like crazy. All right, here we go. Matthew 23, 37. Love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and with all your mind. Everything. Okay, I got it. Um, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. That's when football players be like, I did that for God. You with me? So it just, now you say, well, what if I don't want to do it for the glory of God? I don't know. That's just what I do. You do whatever you want, huh? Get some milk. Get some milk. I was like, I'm not trying to offend nobody. I'm just, I'm just telling you what's in that book. Uh, Proverbs 13, 4, this is going, lazy people want much, but get little, but those who work hard will prosper. Now, a lot of people won't tell me this business is easy. I tell, I'm telling you it's work. Now, the good news is it ain't carrying shingles around. Does that make sense? It ain't priming tobacco, and it ain't sitting in no desks in there. You with me? It's work like going to ball games. It's work like driving a car, like this right here, looking over the knuckles. Looking over the knuckles. Terry, Terry sends me pictures all the time. Be him. It'd be his knuckles. He said, I'm looking over my knuckles. I'm going somewhere. Does that make sense? Like, I've done this for 27 years, Kevin. Send pictures of myself, my, my, my knuckles to friends saying, hey, I'm looking over my knuckles. What are you doing? Because if you're at home watching TV, not going to make no money. Does that make sense? And that's a different kind of work. That ain't real work. But this is not physical work, but it's talking to people. And I tell you this, posting stupid stuff on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, that ain't going to work. You're going to have to, that, that ain't work. Works when you pick up the phone and call them. Does that make sense? It is, it's, it's just such a fraction of a difference, difference. But that fraction makes all the difference in the world. Does that make sense? Okay, so, all right. I want to do that. I do have some leaderboards I want to show you. Pull up, what did I have, Billy, as far as the leaderboards? I want to show y'all some people that are winning. Um, yeah, here we go. Any of them will do. Okay, so this is what I call the AARP leaderboard. It stands for um, Andy Albright Racing Points because this year is driven. But I, did, I went ahead and did it for this past year because I want to see what it looks like before I roll it out for sure as a real leaderboard or a real contest. We could use this to run some contests. I'm probably going to do that this year the more I think about it. But see, now, I'm going to show you. Okay, see, this one right here, this one right here has Brant Swindell as number one. And the main reason he's showing number one is because he had 63 recruits. So what I do is I give him 63,000 points. It's just a made-up number. He, I give him 1,000 points for every recruit. So that's why he's got 428, 22,000, I mean 485,000, okay? So if you, did, if you took 63,000 to 422,000, it goes up to 485. But thank you. Um, <laughs> Hutchinson, he had 428,000. He only had eight recruits, so his only went up 80,000. But you can see who the winners are in the company in racing points. Swindale, Mark Hutchinson, Robert Wilson. Some people call him Sarge. Um, Mike and Michelle Alleman. Mike was with us hanging out in, in Canada. And Minerva was with us. She had a blast. It was fun laughing with her last night and Debbie Ben. Brandon Beal was right up there. But now look at Brandon Beal don't have that many sales, but that's premium is high. So his per sale premium. What if my man Brandon Beal could write this year, could write 290 applications, but 41 of them was 278,000? Well, I'm going to tell you what he'd have to do. He'd have to book more appointments. 
Does that make sense? All he's got to do is pick out the phone, see how many more hundred thousand dollars he can make if he did. Now, I, I'm not trying to tell him he should or would. I'm just saying if he did. I'm just explaining how it works, right? Okay, and let's see how many he hired. He hired 24. Well, if I'm out there, I'm, I'm thinking this right here is that Anthony guy going, he's perfect, but I'm going like, does that make sense? You with me more head? You know, I'm going after him. I'm not trying to come down here and beat up James Coleman. Does that make sense? I'm thinking, I'm going for the champion. I'm going to try to recruit 63 people, and I'm going to try to write 271 amps. I don't know what Brandon Bill, Brandon Mill might be, and I'm going to tell you what. If, if I hired him, I'm like, bro, you are in the top 10 in the country. You are number six. You like Ohio State in basketball. They rank number six in the country. You number six in the country. You're somebody. You knew that about Ohio State. I know you knew that. You know who they playing? You know who they playing tonight? The Tar Heels. The Tar Holes. I'm t- Tar Heels. 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 He don't change. <laughs> Always got a chance. <laughs> it's, so if I hire Brandon Bell, I'm like, you know I'm a six in the country. Way to go, Bo. Does that make sense? But there's this thing about, like, Bill, how'd you like to be number one next year? What would Ashley think if you became number one? I'm already number one with Ashley. I'm saying, what if you became number one in the country with the alliance? People say, you calling him out? What if you was number one? You know it. See, if you'd have been, if you'd have grown a little bit taller and a little bit bigger, you might have been played in the NFL. Maybe, maybe. But that, that, that you can't control that. But this you can control. Yeah. How'd you like to be number one? What's your, what's your, um, you got a girlfriend. You ain't married yet, are you? Are you yeah. married? Oh no. That's okay. what's her name. Yeah. Monica. What would, what would Monica think if you was number one? She'd be like, yeah. think something. I don't know. How'd you like to find out what she say if you're number one? Does that make sense? Think about that, cuz. See, who's, who's, are you thinking about being number one right now? If I can get you thinking about it, does that make sense? Like you could be the fastest growing new person in your life. But here's, this is how I get people going. This is what I say to people. You, I, I almost want to tell you what I don't say. But I mean, some people, what they say to their people when they hire them, I don't understand. It's like, Dude, you're not inspiring anybody. You're not getting them excited. They say things like, man, I tell you what, I don't like these final expense like I like this mortgage protection leads. I'm going to tell you what, this company, this company right here, issue that other company. Like, what are you talking about? Does that make sense? Like, what are you talking about? Now, um, he said, well, don't you tell them anything about the products? So I'd be like, yeah, look, here's what I tell them. I'm like, Foresters gives us the most opportunity, okay? But when you, in other words, I like them the most. That's like who I want to write with. That's what I want to tell people to write with. I want to push foresters. Why? Because they are the ones that are nicest to us, and I trust them, and they can stick with us. Who else? I love CFG. I love Mutual of Omaha. I love um, Transamerica. But if somebody going to die, them companies won't take them. We got to get guaranteed. We got to go with a guaranteed issue, like AIG or GIW or GW. GW. Does that make sense? That's what I say to them. But I don't say this opinion stuff. It makes no sense. But what I do talk to them and be like, wouldn't it be crazy? Like, watch this, watch this. Here's another. Hey, Sean Boone, he played football just like you. What if he whoops you this year in sales? You done been here a whole year. This year, you ought to compete with him. I got his number. <laughs> <What's>, <laughs> does that make sense? That's what I say to him. Like, you ought to go for it, bro. You ought to just say, Hey, here's what you ought to do. <laughs> yeah, I can see Sean Boone get up and run, start running around like that. Does that make sense? Like, this is what I say to people. Like, I just go like, I go to Terry. You got to try to go, you got to try to go board member. You know? Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I go, and then I go, here's what, here's where I spend my time. I am like cray cray dreaming, and then I am the most micro manager, micro tiny element person you can imagine. Like, I want everything right with my guys. And I want that. I basically, I, I, 
I'm not sure how you say it. I want their head in the stars, but I want their hand on the pen. Does that make sense? I, I want them grinding. Does that make sense? What, what's the uh, uh, Dave Dorn's football coach at NC State? He, he's, his birthday turned 48. I texted him. I said, happy birthday, coach. I'm proud of you. You, you, you stud. I'm just so proud to know you. And he said, I'm 48, and I'm still kicking 25-year-olds' asses. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and I replied back, and it was, I put a picture of me. It was, it was Monday, so that would have been the first, second, second. So I took a picture of me and all the people up there, and, and I said, that's the CEO of Forrester's up there. And then he said, you're a grinder. I like that about you. <laughs> that makes sense. You're a grinder. I like that about you. You know what he didn't say? You a pretty boy. A lot of talk, no action. He didn't say that to me. He said, you're a grinder. Does that make sense? This business to get rich is a lot of grinding. Swindale is a grinder. And Jail's like, my boy's a pretty boy. I go, he's pretty, Jail, but he's a grinder. Does that make sense? Now that Anthony Ruiz, anybody going to call him pretty? No, no, no. Well, he might have a girlfriend and thinks he's pretty. You don't know. He's a grinder. He's a grinder. Now, see, you see how this kind of gets you going? Yeah. This is the guy you got to talk to people. You go like, yeah, but, I mean, when are we ever going to do anything? Well, let's make some phone calls. You ready to make some phone calls? Does that make sense? Like, I don't, I don't talk about making phone calls. I make phone calls. But I talk about dreaming and inspirational stuff. But I, when, I start talking, when I start talking about the product, then let's just do it. Let's write. Let's fill it out. Let's pick which one works. Quit talking so much. Let's go. Let's book some appointments and go. Does that make sense? The only thing, if I'm talking, it's got to be inspirational type stuff. You with me? Now, um, we were educating people on the HMA thing. All right? I got an HMA. Anybody got an HMA card? Hold up. Anybody card besides me? Huh? You got one, but don't have it with you? Yours is on the way? Yours is on the way? So you got one. Who got one? Lucero's got one? You have it with you? You don't have it with you? Okay, I don't like the color of these things. Um, he told me when we sold 10,000 of these, we could change the colors to red and black or red and white or something. So y'all go sell one because we need to get to change these colors. We're like that dead gum rams up in here. Chargers or something. You know what I mean? Is that the color of the rams? Yeah, and the chargers kind of too, right? Well, you better hurry up. You get you a card now before the colors change because <laughs> we're going to sell 10,000 of these. Now, when I'm, when I'm talking about HMAs, I was telling them, how, we, we spent some time, uh, Elliot, the, Elliot uh, Gorog, the president, went with us up there and hung out with us, and he taught people how this worked. That, that's, that's, that is, he was selling it, really, to tell you the truth. More than telling, he was explaining, he was selling it to everybody. I think he got everybody committed. But you wouldn't believe the questions that a lot of my leaders had up there. And I was like, now, if you don't know it, how's your people going to know it? So, you know what I mean? So, you got to know your product. I get that. Does that make sense? So, I'm not, I want to make sure I'm not, like, misleading you. But it, 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 also, I'm not teaching a brand new person, spend an hour with him. You know, basically, I'm saying, here's how you sell it. Here's how it works. Does that make sense? All right, I got you fired up enough? All right, grab a seat, Austin. This is Austin Heater, y'all. All right. Let me show you, okay, Marcus Richardson. By the way, Marcus Richardson. I hired Marcus Richardson. Hey, let me show you all something else how it works, too, so you know. Uh, I want to draw, Billy. How do I do that? Yeah, okay. Usually what happens, what you'll do, um, Kevin, and um, what's your name again? Ivan. Ivan, what you do is you hire somebody, and you want to quickly help them hire somebody, but really it's you hiring them. Does that make sense? And then you want to go hire another person. Now, if this person's real good, VJ might hire five or six on his own, but I'm going to go talk to this person quickly after VJ hires them, and I'm also going to talk to this person right here. I'm going to come down here and talk to this person because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get as many people as I can to find the one that's got the kahunas to do the work. Does that make sense? And a lot of times, the person that does it is not the one you hired directly. It can happen, but most of the time it's not. 
you tracking with me? Like, 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 like Richardson. I hired somebody who I don't even remember who, who hired somebody who I don't even remember who that was, and then another person who hired Richardson. But I was, so I started talking to Marcus Richardson. I, and I said, Marcus, I think you can do this. I need for you to buy a plane ticket and meet me in Dallas. And he was like, when? I said, now. And so then he talked to his wife, and she said, you know, I think God's telling me to tell you to do it. I was like, God's right. Buy the ticket. So he bought the ticket, and, and, when, and we, we got to be friends. And now he's one of the most successful people in the company. But I'm telling you, I didn't really hire him. He's just somebody I found. Got okay? All right, so Marcus Richardson. Way to go, Marcus. But now I'm going to watch this. I'm going to go, Marcus, uh, if I don't do this, I'll get a text. He'll be like, hey, how come you don't think I can be number one? Okay, Marcus, I think you can be number one, and um, I want you to try to beat Austin Heater and Sean Boone, and um, I want you to beat um, Brant Swindell. Okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> but you, you'd be surprised. VJ, I still think you could win. You'd be surprised how many people play stuff over and over in their mind because you say something. Like I called Danny Johnson the other day, and I said, Danny, you know how much people love you? He said, no. I said, I'm telling you, people love you. He said, I, he, he said, I, keep, I keep thinking about that. He said, I just can't get over it. The people love me. And then when some people were around, we were talking about it, and they said, we do love you, Danny. He said, oh, my God. But people play that stuff over and over again, and you got to be careful what you hear. Like I always try to grab something like that good and then play it in my mind like, yeah, Harry Edwards said I was good, you know. Randy Albright said I'd be number one. But don't play the part where I said Sean was going to be playing number one. You don't need to do that. That'd mess your head up. Does that make sense? <laughs> James and Jane Hill. I, I will tell, I'm going to tell Jane and James this. On the AARP report, why don't you try to be number one? Okay? And then James could say, well, Andy, I just don't think I need to hire 258 people. I think 27 because I work better with them or whatever. He might have a reason for that. So I go, okay. All right, no, no, how about this? How about we pick another leaderboard that you can try to be number one on that makes sense for you? How about, how about, um, how about total producers? This is life insurance and annuities, but it don't give you any points for recruiting. So even though he's got 63 and we got on report, there's no other column over here of money, right? So, that's, so this is just straight up life and annuities. So if you sell $100,000 worth of annuities, you get 10,000 points, 10%. If you sell a million, that gives you 100,000 points. All right? So I would say to, Mar to James and Jane, why don't y'all try to win this one? Because I want them to win the other one, to tell you the truth. I want them to get the most recruits. And, and, the mo and James, same, James, same thing with James and Jane. I didn't hire them. I hired somebody who hired somebody who hired somebody who hired them, and then we got to be friends. And so what happened to the other people? I don't know. They quit, died. Got a job? I don't know. I can't keep up with everybody. I barely keep up with who I got, much less the ones that quit. You know what I'm saying? I can't think about them. All right, so it changes the numbers a little bit. How about this one? Janina Wilson, she, she's, she's, she's not even quite a citizen yet. Um, she's from Germany, and she, lived in this, she grew up in this little, she was with us. That's why I know all this about her. She grew up in this little bitty redneck country town out in the woods, out on a hillside in Germany and would watch, see like this black and white television and see some stuff and it's got the dreaming and thinking about stuff, how she could get out of this place. In other words, you women she's trying to hide how she could get out of this place. And um, she worked on cruise ships and she worked on um, different kind of um, hospitality jobs. Went to school for hospitality and then she, said, she, she visited America and said, that's the country, I want to get there. So she called up a friend that got in America and said, how did you get there? And her friend said, what I did is I found a German-owned hotel, and I applied to work in that hotel in America, and then they got over there, and I got to know people, and I figured it out. And so she applied to this hotel in Miami. They have hired her, and boom, now she's in the process. She called it something. She's a resident or something. You have to, you have to be a resident for five years before you can apply for citizenship. So she's got to go through that. You with me? So if I'm you, I'm going like, and she has a, like a German accent. And if I talk about like, I love Lucy, she don't know who that is. Or Ricardo, you know, the guy that says, oh, Lucy, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> you might be too young. You know, do you know who I love Lucy is? Got really red lips and red hair. You've heard of her. Well, this girl ain't never heard of her. You know what I'm saying? 
And so, like, so she, she's at a disadvantage. What was your name again? Brenda. Brenda, she's at a disadvantage. Does that make sense? But she's a grinder. She was with American Income trying to make some money with them and didn't make no money and then came over here. She said she's making 1000 a week. She considered that no money, 1000 a week. And then I said, what are you doing here? She's like, I'm making around ten to 16000 a month, a month right now. It just varies. How would you like to make between ten to 16000 a month? She's pretty fired up. But she's only, been, she's only been with us, I think, this, I think this is her first full year, the first full-time year, first year. And she beat out Adam Johnson. Adam be like, I could have beat her if I want to. <laughs> Adam, why don't you try to be number one? Tell everybody, hey, um, I'm number one. I'm on Fitz's team. I'm on number one. I'm representing Fitzgerald, number one in the country. Does that make sense? Like, you got to have a, re you got to have a, some trick, huh? A mantra, something that you got to be talking about how I'm doing it. All right, why not? You say, Andy, you want everybody to try to be number one? Bob, uh, listen to this. Let me show you all this one. This right, guy right here, uh, he's 54 years old. You know how I know that? Because he posted on ban. And what he said is, she's, she's something age, and he's something age, and when you add them together, their age adds up to 54 years old. And what he said is, He's the top producer, and she's the top producer, and this is their numbers added together. He said, I'm going to whoop y'all combined in 2020 and posted it on band. He said he's going to whoop them both. And then, um, I can't. Oh, and then Debbie Ben started talking about, Debbie Ben said, I'm going to write $500,000 in life and and five million in annuities this coming year. That's what she said, all right? Now look, she ain't got a contract. She don't have to do it. She don't get fired if she don't. Nobody gonna make fun of her for this. She just said that's what she's gonna do, cuz. Now, I, I said, and somebody said, can you do that? I said, yes, yeah, she can do that. She, she didn't hardly work much this year. She said, well, I was goofing around first part of the year, but I've come on strong. Last part of the year, she said, but watch me in 2020. I'm going to do this right here, 500000 Let me show you all the annuity leaderboards if you're wondering about that. Oh, that's one of the, oh, I go. There's, um, that's Debbie Ben right there, and that's Minerve, and that's Mia. Mia won a trip. That's Janina back over there chatting with me. And this is, um, this is um, Jerry. Yeah. We got more pictures of those. All right, I'm going to go to the leaderboards. You getting ready to pull up more pictures? Oh, oh, okay, let me, let me show you all this. All right, so that's looking down where we were. Flip through them, Billy. What else we got? That's cool. I didn't know you had these. Okay, that's, um, that's Veray um, Joseph, Veray Bradley Joseph. So that, she's married to Jake. And so Jake and Veray, they're brand new. This is their first year, and um, she won as a rookie. And this is Mia, Mia Fennell. That's Darwin. Darwin, come hang out with us. You see Darwin there? But look how, see how we're hanging down over it? Now, that's our people right there. There's, there's Jerry texting. So what's that say? He's texting, <laughs> texting Cassie. And um, who is that right there? I don't even know. See who, what else we got on here, Billy? Okay, yes, yeah, see, they had that full popcorn and chicken wings and everything sitting there. Let's see if you see Drake down there. He's somewhere down there on the court. All right. Is that it? Is that all we got from there? I know we had a bunch of those. All right, let's do it. Let's go to the annuity leaderboard. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's look at annuities. So Brant Swindell, by the way, popped a two more issue paid, took him to over $2 million in annuities. Wow. If you're brand new, let me work with you on that. Your commission, if you're brand new, is going to be about 2.75%. So you to make about $27,000 times two. So you make about $54,000 just for that right there. The only thing is you'd be promoted all the way up to 80% because that's over 200,000 points, and now you're getting paid at 80%. Now you're making about 4%, so you'd make about $80,000 on $2 million. Does that make sense? Like $80,000. All 
Um, now, you won't see Debbie's name, Ben's name on here, but she says she's going to write $5 million. Here's why. Because she's been writing business like crazy, and she's got tons and tons and tons of clients that she's not moved their annuities. She didn't try to move their annuities. She didn't focus on annuities. She wasn't even thinking about annuities. But now I didn't got her thinking about it, and Swindell got her thinking about it. She's like, I bet if I go back, first of all, I'm going to write 500000 this year, and I'm going to start looking for annuities, and I'm going to re-go back to all my clients and touch base with them. They trust me. I think I can move $5 million in annuities this year. Now, she's put all these requirements on me, too. She's like, you got to do this and this and this and this, and if you do that, then I'll do the $5 million in annuities. Does that make sense? You say, what, what you got to do? You just worry about your business. <laughs> okay, let me worry about mine. I got enough. You got enough to worry about without worrying about me. But you, you went me on the five million. So my question is, what do you think you want to do this year? How much money do you want to make doing annuities? So Hutchinson, you see he, you've seen one of the leaderboard, Mark was winning. The other one, Brant Swindell, was winning. If I was you, I'd get tired of them two names. I'd be like, I'm getting tired of them two names. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Moorhead. And if you met them, you wouldn't be like, You'd be like Andy Ruiz. I don't care. Bring him on. <laughs> JC. Oh, check this guy out right here. Mike Shields. I, I have a question for my staff. Is Mike going to win? I think these are all his personal annuities, like his own money that he moved to me, I think. Um, so he's almost going to win the cruise just moving his money. I don't think he sells a lot for us. I think he's got license, but I think he just moved his annuities because he's a licensed agent. And I'm, I'm going to say, I think Adam Katz, or no, 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 Angela Clark hired him. So I'm going to talk to Angela. I say, Angela, you ought to help this guy win the cruise, you know. He's got to be so close to winning it if he ain't already won it. Just moving it. What if you hired him and you're making a percentage and all he's doing is moving his own money? It's just crazy talk how this works. Okay. Oh, I want to, this, this is a little bit different for me, but I want to tell you all this. Um. We give money away. I give money to NC State, and I give it to preachers and churches. My wife gives a lot to Wake Forest Baptist because she's a cancer survivor, and she gives to animal shelters and stuff like that. She's different things she gives money to. But one of the things we do is a good Samaritan bonus, and here's the way it works. Based on how much you sell and based on how much you recruit, we give money away each year. So each month, you'll get your money deposited in an account, and then at the end of the year, However much you've saved up, 500 or 1,000, or if it's 50 bucks, we'll give it to the charity that you choose. As a matter of fact, if y'all hadn't let Mac know and Tia know, let, let, let's know what charity you're going to give your money to. Let, let them know. Go on, um, <clears throat> check with your upline, email Mac, email Tia, and say, here's who my charity is going to go to. And this year, what we said is it's based straight on how much you sell. So what I, here's what I'm asking, Terry, is how, if you all know how we do Good Samaritan. I'm not going to take a lot of time going through it. Do you have any crazy ideas how we should give away the Good Samaritan money next year? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't even have the report to go show you it, but like if you sold $5,000, I think if you sold $5,000, you get $25. If you sold $10,000, you get $50. Bucks. And then $30,000, you get like $250. Bucks. So if you sold over... 30,000, you'd get 250 times 12. So you give away a couple thousand dollars to your charity. If y'all have a suggestion on how we structure that, I got to change it or leave it the same this coming year, the way you win money to give to your charity. I'm asking for your input if you've got any ideas or creative things. You know what we ought to do is if you recruit a guy and get him selling you recruit a guy and get him selling, we put $100 in your name. So every person you get selling, we give $100 to charity. Does that make sense? So if you got, that's, that's not a bad idea. But if you can think of something, we've done different ways that we, we usually give away, I think, was over, I think we've given away over a quarter of a million dollars so far, if I remember correctly. So... This year, this year, how many years, like, give away another $100,000, $150,000, however strategy we do to design it. Does that make sense? So I'm asking for that. All right. Um, oh, how, how to be fanatical. Okay, so being fanatical is trying to win no matter what. 
okay? But the way we, the easiest way to show it is the number of phone calls you're making. So you get a bunch of leads, 10, 20, 30, 50 leads, old leads, new leads, any kind of lead you can get, and you start calling those names. And people make excuses. Well, the reason I didn't sell a lot, and I go, look, I don't care. I don't care why you didn't sell. I just want, Debbie, Ethan, I want to know how many, how many calls you make. Now, after the calls, let's talk about how many people said hello, and then let's talk about people who said, who said that yes, and you booked an appointment with. Those are our main statistics. But I can't make chicken salad out of chicken poop. Well, that ain't gonna work. Make sense? I can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And if you all know how to do that, a sow is a female pig. And they have leather ears. So it's hard to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Does that make sense? Well, it does when you think about it. It's hard to make it. It's hard to make chicken salad out of chicken poop. You need chicken meat. Right? And some mayonnaise. You put mayonnaise with the poop. Look here. 5000 gets you $25. 10000 gets you $50. 15000 gets you 75 These are the rules. And so 50000 gets 250 30000 gets $150. So here's the personal production. This is, might be a good rules this year, but we need some people writing $50,000 in a month. Does that make sense? Maybe we change the rules. I, I, would, I would ask Billy, if y'all print that out me, i got to think about that in between now and the end of the year, and I take input, and we're going to announce how, how, much money, how, how much money we gave away last year and then how we're going to give money away going forward. Okay? All right, back to the chicken salad. Chicken, in this case, or silk, in this case, starts with the number of phone calls. Does that make sense? Give me, let, me have a draw, let me draw again, Billy. All right, here we go. So it works like this. You got a funnel, stuff coming in, and it funnels down into money coming out. Okay? It funnels down into... Does it make any sense to y'all? Can I do a better drawing of that? You with me? Money dropping out, trips to Alaska dropping out, rings dropping out. What goes in in the beginning is number of phone calls. Now, I don't want to get, I actually do want to get mean, but I know that don't work. <clears throat> but if you're not listening, it definitely is not going to um, matter. But if you're listening, I'm not going, I don't, I don't want to, don't feel like I'm looking at you because it looks like I'm looking at you if you're walking, looking at your screen, but I can't see you. All I see is a camera, so don't get mad at me. Now, the people out to my right and my left, I'm not going to look at them because I don't want to, I don't want to offend anybody, but I need you to decide if you want to get rich or not. And if you do, you need to examine the number of phone calls that you make because you ain't going to get rich on chicken poop. And putting small numbers is the same thing as chicken poop or same thing as a sow's ear. Big numbers result in big numbers. Hello. ho. I know you might have went to some liberal college like Carolina but, <laughs> or Liberty or whatever. That's not liberal, by the way. <laughs> Liberty is ultra conservative. Okay, what I'm telling, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to get you to think like little numbers don't produce big results. You say, well, if I get one big sale, it does. You're making me mad. Oh, boy. Uh -oh. Hey. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is the year of the big numbers. This is the year of the fanatic. This is a year that we have people making a thousand dials and wearing them phones out and booking 20 appointments a week. Big numbers, big results. Does that make sense? What you've been doing all of a sudden, Ethan, what Tim Sipe's been doing, y'all better get your mind right because Debbie Ben is on a tear. Moorhead's on a tear. Y'all have no idea. Terry Edwards done made a decision up here. Raise your hand. 
and then made a decision. Big numbers. Tracking with me? Okay, let me tell y'all something else that I, I was telling them about up there and um, if I can find it, if I was telling them about up there in Canada. See, we had a lot of time talking. There's a lot of stuff I'm telling you I told them. How many of y'all know who um, I was, like on, when, on a 25-hour flight to Thailand, where it's two hours to Detroit and then 13 hours to Inchan, Korea, and then six hours, I think five or six hours. So I was on a flight a lot, so you can watch a lot of movies. All right, so <laughs> there was this movie, and it was called uh, Rocket Man, and it was like some guy, you've seen that? Dude, we'll have to get you off of the television. <laughs> You keep watching television. How old you say you are? Yeah, perfect age. So I'm going to tell you something, bro. I tell people all the time, I watch a lot of television. That's how I know stuff. Does that make sense? Well, I'm going to tell you something I learned off television when I took some notes with Rocket Man. Did you watch? I bet you didn't take no notes. But I bet you remember this when I tell you. So Rocket Man said, first of all, it's Elton John is who it is. Y'all know who Elton John is? He's flamboyant. Okay? And when I mean flamboyant, I mean in every sense of the word. He's crazy. I was crying, <laughs> tears, watching that show. And then I was laughing like crazy, and then I was fired up. I mean, it created some serious emotion in me. Did it with you, too? All right. So he said, um, he said, you got to kill the person you were born to be in order to be the person you want to be. Right? Now, I mean, this joker ain't Jesus or nothing, so I don't, you know. <laughs> now, what I'm saying is just because I said it, it ain't like I was quoting the Bible. I quoted the Bible, y'all didn't write it down. I read Elton John says it. How about write that down? <laughs> but, but this guy was this little dorky dude, little white dorky dude with glasses, messed up daddy, messed up mommy, messed up, messed up family, messed up. Don't raise your hand, okay? But messed up. And he wanted to be somebody. That was his deal. He wanted to be somebody, okay? I could relate to that because I remember I was little, I want to be somebody, all right? He said, kill the person. And I thought about who I was and who I would have been and who Janina was born to be. What she was born to be is somebody that went and got the, um, went and got the, the water and the food and brought it back to the village. And then went back and got the water and food. Does that make sense? She was meant to marry some dumb old German, worthless, mean, rough. You with me? That's who she was born to be. That's what she was born to be. Debbie, you know what she was born to be. You know what she was born to be, right? But what did I want to be? So I had to stop being who I was and be who I wanted to be. Does that make sense? We was at a meeting up there in Detroit. And the little boy said he wanted to be an actor. I said, next week we're going to let you do the plan. You act like you know what you're doing. He's going to be an actor because I act like I know what I'm doing. And then what I do is I, I, I acquire stuff from other people. It ain't like I thought of any of this. You know this? I ain't none of this I thought of myself. I got it from somebody else. He said, um, you don't just change your name. So his name was um, Reggie White, Reginald White. Okay? And he changed his name to Elton John. Even watching how he changed his name, some guys asked him, and he says, I'm Elton. And the guy said, Elton Wood. He was like, and he saw something, he says, John. <laughs> so he came up with Elton John, so that's what he stuck with. You with me? Um, so he, he's, so that he's, he gets, starts this band, which is really weird how he does, he starts this band. But he's talking to this other guy named Rodney Jones, and his, his group's called The Flames, and he's traveling. This is real life. He's traveling with them, and he's like the backup, the second song, or the, like the one comes out first, you know, the small guy. And he's talking to this James, this, um, this Rodney Jones guy, The Flames. And he says, he says to Rodney Jones, he said, how does, a fat, how does a fat white kid with glasses get to be somebody? And Rodney looks at him, he says, I don't know, how's a skinny black kid from Detroit get to be places? And he said, well, you're doing it. And he said, yeah, because I went on the road for 10 years. And now people know who I am. Now, it's funny because people don't know Rodney like they know Elton John now. But he gave 
Elton the advice. And then he, 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 after he told him that about how he went on the road, he said, yeah, but how do I become a songwriter? And, and this Rodney character looks at him and he said, write some songs. Like, you say, how do I become an agency manager? Well, hire some people. Debbie, you know how I'm agency manager? Hire some people. Jake Krause, Jake and, um, not Jake, um, well, they, they qualified agency managers, but um, Brandon and Jennifer Bulis just became, they hit agency manager. You know why? Hired some people. He hired his son. I don't think his son liked it too much. I don't know if he didn't like sale. I don't know if he liked fun. I don't know what he liked. But his son found this other guy named, um, Brannick, Flannick, it's not now Flannick, but his name almost sounds like it. Somebody, somebody's out there mad because I can't say his name. But this guy started selling like crazy, and Magyar started selling like crazy, and Jake and Bill Krauss selling. That gum, he's an agency manager. He's like, he not no agency manager. Yes, he is. Why? Well, he hired some people. You, this guy came and saw Does that make sense? Like, don't complicate it. Hire some people. Now they got to sell. Morehead, I'm telling you, it, it just as soon be you next year as a new agency manager or di district manager that is VJ or Kevin or that lady behind you named Deborah or Martha or hmm, Brenda. Yeah, Brenda. It just be you as Brenda. Does that make sense? All you can do is, it like, does that make sense? It's non discriminatory. It has nothing to do with whether you got a college degree or whether you're taller than me. That makes sense. I'm more likely to be agency manager than I'm going to whoop Ruiz. <laughs> he could do it uh, I could do it. I would, you talk about running around circles. <laughs> He'd have to catch me <laughs> to hit me. Um, so, but, uh, but, like, it was fun talking to my friends up there. Um, my friends up there in Canada, my buddies about this stuff. He says, um, this is what Elton John said, where there is darkness, where there is darkness and no light, there is no Elton John. In other words, what he's saying is, if I come into the room, they're going to be light. That makes sense? And y'all didn't know, I didn't know all this either. They just got messed up with drugs and sex and freaking... I couldn't mind. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. I just, they're crazy. But he would sing and write songs. Does that make sense? In other words, if you're not perfect, you're perfect for this job. You're the right fit if you're not perfect. I'm going to tell you what. That boy Ruiz did not look perfect to me. And I know some stuff about that crazy other one. Um, no, the one I was talking about. Dante, he ain't right. I'm telling you, he ain't right. But he can fight. Does that make sense? So you don't have to be right in the head. You don't have to be everything perfect, Nick. You just got to find some people. Does that make sense? He also said, people don't pay to see Reginald White. They pay to see Elton John. People don't say, you, you, they, don't, they don't pay to pay see Terry Edwards, who he was born to be. They pay to see Terry Edwards. It's showtime. It's showtime, baby. See, that's what I got to teach you. It's showtime. Now, here's what I would do. I would be down my road, riding down the road. I'd be listening to audios. I'd be saying, like, it's showtime. See, because I'm just a little redneck. I ain't never said showtime in my life. One thing I know about showtime TV, you know what I'm saying? So, I would just practice talking, and then I watch this. Um, I like that preacher that talks like this. Uh, Joel Olsen. I'd be like, let me talk to y'all. <laughs> so I just practice it. Like I practice acting, if that makes any sense. And then this is kind of who I am. Like, like when I come in that suite, I was giving it the old. <laughs> does that make up there at the ball game? You know what I mean? Because they didn't come out to hang out with Andy Albright. They come out to hang out with. Does that make sense? They come out with, come on, Andy, go have a good time. Like Elton John, there's going to be light. Does this make sense? Talk to me. He said, I'm Elton Hercules John. Does that make sense? Like, I am, I, I am Andy Albright. Does that make sense? You, you, you need to start hitting them with I am 
And, and, and if the band, if the, if, the, if the choir don't play in the background, you know what I mean, the angels ain't singing, but in your head, it's singing. Does that make sense? Let me see that. I, see, I, saw, I saw this guy do this the other day, like that right there. I said, I wonder if I could do that. <laughs> Kid Rock. The jerker said, here's what I need for y'all to do. I need for y'all to say kid, and I need for y'all to say rock. I said, no, oh. He didn't just do that. I mean, who's crazy enough to tell half the stadium to say kid and the other one to say rock? And then he got, they started doing it. They said, kid, rock. And I was going, oh, I, I had the kid part. I was like, kid. <laughs> <laughs> then he flipped that thing like that and caught it like that right there. That joker crazy. Does that make sense? Well, here's what I figured out. The CEO of Foresters, Jim Boyle. Ain't no S on the end of that. It's Jim Boyle. Does that make sense? And then, um, the other, in other words, it's Showtime Boyle. It ain't who he really is. I know him. I can see right through him. Does that make sense? I see right through But it don't matter. Does that make sense? Because most people ain't going to look at you that close. They don't look at me that close. And what's the other guy I like a lot? The vice president, Matt Berman. I told Matt, I said, Matt, you got the coolest hair of all executives in the United States of America in the insurance industry. You know what he said? Everybody's got their thing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Got that. It, it, it's wavy and it's got that um, gray in it. You know, about 10, 15 years younger than me, got gray hair. I ain't got a gray hair in my head. You know? Until you got on your face. You worry about your own self. <laughs> He's a cool looking head of hair. You with me? And, he, and when, when he comes in, you can just, it's, it's Matt Berman time. I need for you, Terry, to put on the show. And we need to teach me. I, I started working with Mia a little bit. Start working with on the Mia Finale show. You with me? Is this making sense? Debbie? It's the Debbie McCade show. Does that make sense? You've you got to be just on it like crazy. What's your name? Jerusha. Lady J. I'd go Lady J. You want to go Lady J? You like that? You feel good about that? Lady J in the house. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. This is a year of the fanatical, and you don't get to be fanatical this year because you say you are. Did you tell me to say this, Jeff? You don't get, Jeff, you don't get to be fanatical this year because you say you are. We're going to judge you by your due. Um, we had our new, um, hey, you're number one in Austin in the um, Nassau Re contest. And you, it ain't over with yet, but you get $1,000 if you keep winning it. Um, I'm going up there Monday. Brant Swindell is number two with $500. Robert Wilson is number three. Matthew Tolbert is number four. And Nathan Thomas is number five. And right outside the leadership is Cuz right there. Jerry McGee and Jonathan and Megan and Pamela Moore is right up there and um, Asaya Osuna. That's that guy Marvin Osuna's son right there. Asias, way to go, buddy. Smoking. He, he can't be much over. I think he's 18. Um, the Rolex, Mark Hutchinson, is going to get to his choice if nothing changes. Right behind him is Robert Wilson again. Robert's just spanking y'all. Y'all, Robert gonna win everything. Y'all don't give up. <laughs> Sydney and Justin Balick is number three. Brant and Jell Swindell, Minerva. Power of 10. Ruben Rodriguez won a power of 10. Vonda Parks and Eric Claymeyer got it. <laughs> this year, the fanaticism is based on what you do. And what I'm trying to do is get the momentum going now that you hit January 1 so that you don't miss that trip. You just got licensed. You need to start messing up quicker. And we're gonna coach you through this. All right. Hey, appreciate you guys tuning in. Glad y'all came up. Hope this was helpful. Keep, keep leaning in. Guarantee you 100, absolute, I'll put it in writing, 100% chance of, of winning with us if you don't quit. And I ain't seen nobody lose yet. Love y'all. Thanks for plugging in. Bye.